I try to go to Disney World each and every single day, so I'd like to think that I'm a pro here at Walt Disney World. Today I'm going to talk about 10 ways you can maximize your Walt Disney World vacation so that you yourself can also become a pro here at Walt Disney World. While you join me here this morning, this afternoon, this evening, if you guys agree with any of these 10 things that you guys should know here at Walt Disney World Resort, Comment down below which one you think is very important or if I happen to miss something that's important to you. Share it down for others because I want this video to be a guide for some of you to take advantage of when you're here at Walt Disney World. First of all, if you're new here on the channel, there's something I love to do at Walt Disney World and it is called rope drop. If you're unfamiliar with what rope dropping is, you're going on in at park open to beat the lines, the crowds. Now a lot of people have been taking advantage of rope drop here at Walt Disney World. So you gotta know exactly what to do, where to go, how to do it at what time. So if you guys aren't, I suggest you hit that subscribe button because I try to do a rope dropping video every single month here on the channel. Most of you guys know how important rope drop is, but what's even more important is early entry for those staying at a Walt Disney World Resort. You get 30 minutes of extra time inside one of the Disney parks of your choosing, whatever you're rope dropping, before the park opens. I will say kind of just explaining all this, you need to know a lot on a Disney World vacation. There is a lot to know, but most importantly, early entry if you're staying at a Walt Disney World Resort, you need to take advantage of that. We're gonna combine that one with rope dropping because it's essentially the same thing. Rope dropping is when the park opens, you get there and you rush on in. Early entry, you get there 30 minutes before the later rope drop, the park open. There are must do's here at Walt Disney World Resort to take advantage of Hop on the rides so darn quick. Skipping the lines for free, rope drop. And also, let's talk about reverse rope dropping. That's also been a technique that I've been using throughout this whole year that I feel has been very beneficial for me and getting on as many rides as possible and as fast as possible. Reverse rope dropping is going to the park late at night, let's say about two hours before park close because most guests at Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios are going elsewhere such as the fireworks at Magic Kingdom, Fantasmic at Hollywood Studios. So take advantage of those low wait times at night. You can probably get a lot done. And the key thing is for free as well. Rope dropping, early entry, reverse rope dropping, all in one. Could be three separate ones, but we're tying that all together because they're essentially the same thing. Comment down below if you guys agree. I really think rope dropping, reverse rope dropping, and early entry is one of the best ways to experience Walt Disney World at a very fast, unique, and efficient matter of visiting. Sticking on trend here, I really feel like number two kind of carries on into everything here is, and that is staying on Disney World property, which ever resort you pick, value, moderate, deluxe, they all have their benefits. Staying on Disney property, you obviously get the buses that are gonna take you and take you back to your resort. They'll take you to the parks and they'll take you back to your resort, which means you don't have to rent a car. You don't have to pay for parking at each and every single park that you end up going to. You get the early entry, which we just talked about for free in point number one, and then you get the free transportation back and forth. But mainly you get the free transportation wherever you wanna go here in Walt Disney property. And the cool thing is you can even jump on another Disney Resort bus and go visit that Disney Resort if you wish. Now if you do stay at a deluxe resorts, we do have a point coming on up a little bit later that is one of my favorite things that you can do only if you stay at a deluxe resort. Most of you guys probably might already know what I'm talking about, but it is without doubt one of the best things you can do here on a Walt Disney World vacation, and that is staying at a deluxe resort if it's in your price bracket, and if you're looking at the schedule of opportunities that may be happening when you decide to visit. Now point number three is kind of a controversial one here in the Disney community, or just Disney in general. Genie Plus is the new Fast Pass. You have to buy Genie Plus in order to skip the lines here at Walt Disney World. This is why I also think point number one was so good because of the fact that you might not have to buy Genie Plus when you rope drop, depending on how many rides you get on. Now Genie Plus fluctuates in price per day. 
And there's different ways you can buy Genie Plus. You can buy individual parks, which are gonna have their own individual value. Or if you decide to park hop at 2 p.m., still another controversial issue here at Walt Disney World, you can buy multiple parks for a set amount dollars. I think the highest I've seen it was $35 per person for the service and $14 per person for the service. Really depends on when you come, how many people are here, because it's always gonna fluctuate in prices for Genie Plus. But I personally am an avid user of Genie Plus. Again, if you guys follow me each and every single day, you'll see me buy the Genie Plus service. And also it's really important to note that you can buy Genie Plus at midnight, the day before your visit. Well, technically the day of your visit, because it's technically the day of your visit at midnight. And then you can make your first selection at 7 a.m. Yeah, see, team no sleep when you come to Disney World. Quite literally. I wish there was a way to kind of like already pre-select those. You didn't have to stay up till midnight. You didn't have to, you didn't have to wake up at 7 a.m. That would be really nice. But um, yeah, by the way too, those things sell out like cookies in a bake shop. Bake shop in a bakery. Those bad boys go quick. And also at 7 a.m. you can make your first individual lightning lane selection at 7 a.m. if you're staying at a Walt Disney World Resort. See how that one ties into point number two. Very important to be staying at a Walt Disney World Resort because you get that individual Lightning Lane selection at another cost, anywhere from 14 to $18 per day. I think it's a little bit higher than that sometimes, but I think that's the highest I've ever seen it go. As far as the attractions that are included in the individual Lightning Lane, there's only a couple. Seven Doors Mine Chain, Train and Tron at Magic Kingdom. Hop on over to Epcot. It's gonna be Guardians of the Galaxy. Animal Kingdom, it's gonna be Flight of Passage. And Hollywood Studios, it's Rise of the Resistance. Just imagine you guys are coming to Walt Disney World for the first time. I mean, maybe one of you guys are. There is a lot to know, like there is a lot to know, so please don't feel overwhelmed because sometimes I'm overwhelmed before going to the parks. And keep in mind, you even have to make a park reservation before going to the parks, hoping that they're not sold out, but they haven't really been sold out in forever, which is a good thing. But um, sometimes they can, especially over at Disneyland, those bad boys go, go so quick. There's a lot to know. There's a lot to know and moving on to our number fifth way to maximize your Walt Disney World vacation is simply just look at the hours, especially if you're coming later in the year, October and November, December. There's these Halloween and Christmas parties. What we just discovered, well, we've kind of known this forever, but it kind of fluctuates every single year, specifically this year when Magic Kingdom is closing at 6 p.m. You wanna to go to Magic Kingdom because not a lot of people like to go to parks that are closing early, but that makes it a perfect way to save on Genie Plus, to get on all the rides, and then hop on over to another park or enjoy a resort that you're staying at, or maybe even go to Disney Springs. Looking at the hours is so important, and also looking at the hours, my favorite thing in the world is to rope drop Magic Kingdom on a Halloween party, or in the future probably a Christmas party, and to hopefully get on tons of rides. But now, really depends on how many times they're having a Halloween party. If it's four times a week, yeah, you might be out of luck because a lot of people are just gonna probably bite the bullet and still go to Magic Kingdom. But odds are gonna be in your favor if the park is closing early, go, go. Always look at the hours because sometimes there's actually a buyout in the Magic Kingdom or Epcot, Hollywood Studios, maybe even Animal Kingdom and nobody's there that day because nobody wants to go on a park that is closing early, but I'm telling you, it's the best thing to do in the world. Do it. The secret's out. The secret's out. Now, number seven is something that I don't really do, but my family does, and it's to book food reservations 60 days early before you come uh, to your Walt Disney World vacation. Last year, it was more so a problem. It doesn't really seem like a problem this year because a lot of people can easily just cancel their, their reservations now, but if you wanna get a specific reservation such as um, Cinderella's Royal Table, that one's pretty hard out to get. You have to do it 60 days, otherwise you aren't gonna be able to get it. But I haven't really seen it an issue too much this year, such as Be Your Guest, I feel like I can get, there's a lot of, lot of um, restaurants that weren't available in years prior that you can get so easily now, but still I, I think 60 days out is, is important for those really sought after dining reservations. So again, you're gonna have to probably research what you want to eat beforehand. It's just like you can't come to Disney anymore without pre-planning. I feel like maybe 
anywhere in the world you can't go without pre-planning. Like if you go to New York City, like it, you have to book out months in advance. So keep that in mind. It's it's tough. It's tough these days when you come to Walt Disney World. It's not really easy unless you're you're an expert. You're an expert. Comment down below if you're an expert. Also, side note, I do want to say thank you if you've made it this far in this video. I know this is very different from the content that I usually make, and I'm talking to you guys who are subscribed here on my channel. This is obviously for you, but other people here that um, may not know Walt Disney World as much as you guys. Number eight, I don't know if this pertains to me, but I, it's just from my experience of when I used to work at Hollywood Studios. The strollers here at Walt Disney World, I advise not using the strollers here at Walt Disney World because A, they're not the greatest, they're plastic. B, you can't bring them back to your resort. And C, I don't think you should use them. They, they did. Now they have updated their strollers from when I previously worked there. They, they were pretty bad beforehand, but there's companies that actually will deliver your stroller to Bell Services at whatever resort you're staying at. And you just simply go and pick it up. And then when you're done with it, you go and drop it off and you're done. But you can, the important thing is you can bring it back to your resort you don't have to have your kiddos walk from the bus stop to your resort room. And you can bring it anywhere, which is super nice. The ones at the park, you can only keep in the park, but if you go to a different park, you can show that receipt and get another stroller for free at that other park. But I think, at least just from my thinking, it's better to get a stroller from a different company here around Walt Disney World. I think Kingdom Strollers and Magic Strollers is the only ones that kind of come to my mind when I used to work Bell Services at Walt Disney World. Um, really good service, by the way, too. I don't know how expensive they are, but I think personally it would be worth it. I don't know, comment down below, parents, if you guys do a stroller company or do you bring your own stroller or do you do one from Walt Disney World inside the parks? Keep in mind as well, if you're buying a stroller inside the park, you're really kind of rolling the dice on if the line's gonna be long because sometimes it takes a very long time to get a stroller, especially if you're rope dropping. You don't wanna be sitting in line to get a stroller and you, you wanna be rushing on into the park. So that's also why getting a stroller inside um, the parks might not be the best way to maximize your Disney vacation in a time efficient manner. Now, number nine is to know when to come to Disney World. Sometimes there's like a one to two week period where there's absolute bliss. From my experience, January is one of the best times to come to Walt Disney World. And also in the summer, it was very empty here, which in the past it really hasn't been. A lot of people don't want to come in the summer heat, but I advise you, if you guys are new on here, hit that subscribe button, thumbs the video up, uh, hit the subscribe button because uh, I post pretty much every day here at Walt Disney World and you'll be able to know if you watch each and every single day and when the best time to come to Walt Disney World is. Last but not least, this is actually kind of something interesting that I thought about. Um, don't be afraid to take a Lyft or an Uber especially if you're going in between parks. Like if you're going to Hollywood to Animal Kingdom, sometimes that bus that is on the loop going from Hollywood to Animal Kingdom kind of takes forever. I've had experiences where it takes anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. It really just kind of depends on uh, how the buses are operating that day. But Ubering and lifting around Walt Disney World is kind of clutch. And even you can do it from your resort if you wish, because they technically drop off in some parks closer than the Disney buses, if you're gonna be a little bit picky by a couple steps. But I always say, don't be afraid to take an Uber or, or Lyft if it fits you in your budget already, because you know, coming here, there's a lot of money to be spent. Like a lot, a lot. With that, that's gonna be kind of like the 10 tips to maximize your Walt Disney World vacation. Again, going in early to the parks is probably like the best thing. And obviously buying Genie Plus and getting Lightning Lanes too, if it fits in your budget. But I hope this helped out some of you guys. Again, this is a different video than I usually totally am making. Maybe I'll make more of these in the future. I figured I kind of want to do something a little bit different than going on into the park and vlogging because tomorrow we're, uh, we have quite the surprise on the channel. So I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this video. I don't know if it's gonna do well, if it's gonna do good, but it's just something a little bit different from what I usually 
make here on the channel. So let me know down below if I missed anything because I'm sure like I missed a lot. But again, these are like the 10 core that I really feel like are going to help a lot of people and stuff to know about here on Walt Disney World property. I feel like I said Walt Disney World a lot in this video, but you know, we're talking about Walt Disney World. But let me know down below if you guys can think of any other ways to help some people to maximize your Walt Disney World stay. With that, definitely a shorter video for sure. But see you guys tomorrow and um, that was it for your, your daily dose. Bye bye.